it's an honor for me to uh, be asked here to speak uh, on the occasion of this uh, special session the Open Food Chapter. Um, I've chosen this subject on uh, business competition, which was, I think, mainly developed by uh, Chavez Halas. And uh, he introduced me to it, and I particularly like it because uh, what you need in the computation are some sort of very, uh, very specific properties of representations of these two algebras, and that's the kind of thing that I like and I know. Uh, so that's more or less the contents of my talk. I'm going to uh, repeat a number of the subjects that uh, Professor Fodorov mentioned already. Um, in particular, the how how um, Charles R. Pavel viewed Wigner uh, quantum systems, and then I'll be working with an example to which will be useful for you who are not uh, familiar with the subject, and I'll um, I will end with some uh, new results that were that were obtained related to OSP 1 to N representations in this. Uh, now, as uh, as the of mentioned, so um, this problem of Wigner quantitation started with a publication or question of Wigner uh, from 1950, uh, and he noticed that if, for simple quantum Hamiltonians, if you take Hamilton equations and you imply the canonical communication relations, then Heisenberg equations follow and vice versa. Uh, but if you just assume Hamilton and Heisenberg equations, then apparently the canonical commutation relations are not necessarily valid. And uh, to go to uh, this historical example of uh, Wigner, we consider just the one-dimensional harmonic oscillator Hamiltonian. Uh, so these are just Hamilton's equations. You take the derivative, then you take the operator form of what you get after taking derivatives. You have the Heisenberg relations, and and what you say is that these two um, uh, equations of motion that should be compatible. So the, the right hand side should be the same, and that gives, in a way, your computation condition. And of course, if your p and q satisfy the canonical commutation relations, this is automatically satisfied, but one wonder uh, what happens if the canonical commutation relation is not satisfied and what comes out of it. Well, um, in, in this case, so without assuming any, any specific commutations of PNP, you can still rewrite your Hamiltonian in this form, and we put uh, h bar and so on to one now just to, to simplify these things. Um, and you have uh, let's say the analog of creation and annihilation operators, but they do not satisfy particular commutation relations. And then it's easy to see that these compatibility conditions, which I denote by CC, uh, are equivalent to, to such a triple or two triple relations that should be satisfied among these operators B plus and B minus. So the question is now, uh, can we get representations for these operators acting in input spaces? Um, and, and one thing you notice that these compatibility relations they involve both anti commutators you know, by this uh, bracket here, and commutators. So that uh, because of these anti commutation <coughs> relations, uh, in fact, these two algebras come into the picture. Uh, excuse me, B yeah. plus is supposed to be Q minus I P. Sorry, is B plus supposed to be Q plus I P? Yes, this is B plus. Mm -hmm. This is B minus. <coughs> yes. Yeah. Um, okay, now, um, so these compatibility conditions, uh, I mean, we of course use a different language at the time, but now we would say that these compatibility conditions are precisely the defining relations of a leaf supraltra, the simplest leaf supraltra you can think of, OSP12. Um, if we go to representations, well, because we're dealing with a quantum system, there should also be uh, of jointness conditions for these uh, physical operators, say, and in terms of these new generators, B plus, B minus, it means B plus, uh, dagger must be B minus, and vice versa, and so we are led to a particular class, the class of unitary representations of OSP 1, 2 in this case. Um, 
these are well known. Uh, they are um, labeled, they're infinite dimensional, they're labeled by a positive real number P and P of 2 is their lowest weight and they just have an infinite, um, so it's just like an output state, they have an infinite number, a number of basis factors and, and it's just that it's positive uh, integer and these, these pluses can be minus x similar to creation and annihilation operator by rating and lowering this uh, n value. I'm not, I haven't written down the explicit action here, but um, just two relations that I've written, the, the action of the Hamiltonian on these basic factors is n plus p over 2, so you, um, this, this representation label p here, if, if p is equal 1 you have the ordinary uh, spectrum, classical spectrum, um, and, and, and this P just acts as a, as a shift in the spectrum, nothing, nothing special as far as the spectrum is concerned. Uh, from, from the explicit action in the representation, one can also work out these computation relations. And also from here, you see that if P is equal to 1, you are back to the canonical commutation relations. So in a way, this, uh, from this example of Wigner, you can already see that um, it, it gives us, in fact, an extension of canonical, uh, canonical computation. And canonical computation is special case of it. It's just for, in one representation, you are back in canonical computation. Uh, but P is any real number here, and, and for the other P, you are outside of canonical computation. Does, uh, does this automatically lead to the statement that the two for the algebra have to be reductive? Um, well, in, in this case, it is, but that is unitarity. Yeah. But what I'm asking yeah. is, you have unitarity plus a solution of some system of this type. Yeah. Does that automatically mean that the super Lie algebra has to be reductive? Um, not that it, it depends on your. You see, the, the super algebra is in fact defined by your Hamiltonian. That's that's how it. Right, okay. and, and you're and forcing unitarity. Yes. So then because of the sort of shortness from the Yeah, so then you yeah. might ask, does that force the super Lie algebra to be deducted? Um, I, I'm not sure if there is a general answer to this. And okay. the, the examples I know, yes, it's always mm -hmm. it's always effective. But I don't think there's a direct connection. Maybe. Well, unitarity yeah. applies with yeah. reductivity, yeah. so yeah. Yeah. my so maybe that, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, um, yes. Uh, so as far as the spectrum is concerned, there's nothing special here. Um, but let me also mention one more uh, slide related to Wigner's example. If you go to wave functions, well, there's no Schrödinger equation involved here. So how do you get, for example, position wave functions? Well, you 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 have your basis of your representation, and you express that you want to have a formal eigenvector of your position operator. Since you know the action of these generators in your representation, you can you can try to compute these coefficients here, and these coefficients have an interpretation as a uh, position rate function. That's a, that's the usual thing. In fact, from this action, you would you would this would lead to a three-term recurrence relation for these coefficients, and if you solve these and normalize these, uh, in this case, uh, it leads. Uh, you would see these are three times the current relations related to Laguerre polyomics, and, and this is what you get as a solution for these coefficients. And uh, you see that if p is equal to 1, uh, this drops out, and these Laguerre polynomials get reduced to the ordinary Hermit polynomials for the canonical, um, for the canonical oscillator. And there are some plots here for different p values equals to 1 bit and then I've plotted for n equals to 0, 1, 2. These are just the, the usual pictures that we are all familiar with for the uh, oscillator. If p is less than 1, between 0 and 1, there are some things, there is a singularity at, at 0 here, but that doesn't really matter. And if p is larger than 1, it's always, the function, the rate function is always 0 for um, position value 0. Okay, so that's the introductory example. Um, and um, I think for a long time uh, that particular paper of Wigner was not really studied a lot or not recognized a lot. And it was really then later on uh, Khaled who introduced Wigner quantum systems 
uh, from a more systematic point of view. Um, and, and this is, uh, it, it wasn't called vector computation from the beginning. I think in the first paper on this topic, he called it dynamical computation. This is related to the equations, the computation of the equations of motion. Uh, and basically, I'm not going to, to go to this in detail, but essentially, if you have a Hamiltonian quantum system described by a Hamiltonian in terms of um, momentum operators and, and generalized position operators, principle of rhythmic quantization are basically the following. You keep all axioms of quantum mechanics, and you just replace your canonical commutation relations by these compatibility conditions between Hamilton and, and Heisenberg equations. And I'll come to the main example in a, in a minute. Um, now, um, so basically, the, if you want to apply this, you start from your Hamiltonian. You determine your compatibility conditions. Uh, essentially, it means you have an algebra in terms of set of uh, generators. These compatibility conditions give you certain relations for your generators, so you have an algebra defined by generators and relations, and then you have to find uh, star representation, you can get star relation, the unitarity condition here. Um, now, unfortunately, uh, this program turns out to often to be too difficult to start from an arbitrary Hamiltonian, and um, <laughs> what one has to do quite often is, uh, well, not work with this algebra, which I've called A here, but with another algebra which is more familiar to uh, to us say and whose generators <laughs> also satisfy the same relations but whose generators will satisfy more than just these relations. Uh, but nevertheless it means that if you construct star representations of this second algebra you still are dealing with representations of the original algebra. So you, you restrict yourself in this way to only a class of solutions of the complete uh, problem. Um, I think personally one of the reasons why this uh, Wigner quantization, um, I mean for me basically it's, it's a mathematical game, but I think one of the reasons why it, it could have importance also for uh, physics is I think because it, it leads quite naturally to, uh, well, non commutative coordinates, you don't assume commutation relations, so coordinate operators do not commute. And 